Good morning everybody and welcome to our runner's review of the brand new GoPro Hero 10. So we are unwrapped and ready to go. Now I brought you over to the gunpowder part part run, which is my local part run if you've not seen any of the videos on the channel before. And I'm gonna take you along, show you some of the settings, features, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and, and basically how I use the camera when we film some of these vlogs. Um, we're gonna film probably in 4K to start with. Uh, at, I don't know actually, I'll have a look, probably 120, so we can slow some of it down. But yeah, I'm gonna show you um, how the camera works, all that kind of stuff as we're going along, what the audio's like and all those bits and bobs. Um, we're doing part run, then we're doing 10 miles afterwards. So, yeah, let's get into it. Okay, people, so, the GoPro 10, we've upgraded. So I was filming on the GoPro 8, also got the 6, and most of the videos I do are on Insta360 cameras as well, but the GoPro for me is the one that I use for vlogging and Sometimes at like the start of events, so if I'm getting B-roll and stuff like that, I'll use it then because it's a little bit easier to carry than like the digital SLR I use for vlogging. Um, so it's a really, really powerful tool for me, the GoPro, in terms of how I use it and when I use it. It's meant to do a lot of different things for me. Also, some of those sort of unboxings and stuff like that, I use it for so it's really important bit of kit for me the 10 which is why I've invested the money in this one the new version the GoPro Hero 10 I'm going to put some stats and features up somewhere of what we get on this uh, price and all that sort of stuff because it's different because you can get a little bit cheaper if you get the subscription um, I think the main thing with this camera uh, there's two actually and is one it's got the new processor in it so all the cameras before this I think I'm going to get this wrong so where are we going by the way uh, are on the first processor. I can't remember what it's called, GP1, I think I might be wrong. GP1, but this is the first camera with the second generation processor. And what that means is everything is a bit quicker. Now even just hitting the uh, record button on the top toe, be fair, how quick is that? Yeah, super, super fast you won't because that content anymore. Yeah, you won't be seeing any content because the other one, there was always a small lag for it um, starting. Um, so that's a real plus. So the processor, you can tell already, is speeding up everything. The other big thing is the frame rates. So I'll come on to exactly different frame rates and we'll play around a bit on this run quickly. But the main thing for me is the fact that I can film in 4K but at 120 because if you're like me and you like to slow stuff down, then you get a much, much crisper picture. Because at 2.7, it was a bit rubbish. Uh, at 4K, it was a bit rubbish. So, this is a 5K camera, but for me, working at that 4K 120, it'll just give me the ability to slow it all down. So I'm currently filming in 4K 120 linear. That's my default setting that I've set up. So, I've reduced, I've got rid of the fisheye, uh, we've got the wider sort of linear feel to it but I've got the 4k uh, in terms of quality but I've got the ability now to slow it down so I'm going to put some footage up now of some of the different footage at the 4k 120 normal speed and then slow down So 
So there you go, what do you think? And also, let me know what you think about the audio. I've done an audio test from both, from the eight versus this, and here it is. This is an audio test. 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 What do you think? Interesting, isn't it? Now, I know it's different because we're out here running, so I'm panting, we've got Toby's shoes uh, banging along with his glide rides, and we've got the water bottle. And it's not that windy today, which is a shame because I wanted to do like the wind test, but it's lucky for us because we're just out here doing 10 miles. It's not very windy. So, uh, in terms of wind reduction, I can't really comment. Yeah, we'll have to find that out. But in terms of the audio, I think it's a bit better. The other thing that they've improved is the stabilization. So let's give that a go. Again, we're going to do this at uh, 4K 120 linear. Let's do some stabilization testing and see what you think. Now I think personally that's an improvement over eight. Eight was good. Don't forget I've not got a gimbal or anything. Um, and it's definitely, I would say, an improvement. I think the stabilization is on par with the Insta360 2. Um, not the Go 2, the, the X2, but or the 1, 2, whatever it's called. But it's definitely an improvement over the 8 in terms of, oh, hold tight, in terms of the stabilization. Which as runners, morning, as runners, it's really important. If you're watching someone doing a, a running YouTube channel, uh, you want something that's stable, so they're not bouncing all over the place. So, stabilization improvement, audio improvement, uh, the processing speeds and improvement. And what was the other thing we said about, Tom? Size, weight. Oh, size and weight. Let's do that next, actually. So, weight. I think this is key because it, right? Right. this is actually heavier. And I can feel it on the selfie stick because this is the stick I use for the eight. And it really does feel heavy. Um, and it's a, it is a, a worry because, like, for example, this camera, I, take, I will take around and do a marathon with it. And it's quite heavy, Tom. And it is just quite... Uh, more chunky yes it's more solid uh, which is good um, but it, you can really feel the weight of it so I would say as a, as a runner that is one of the big downfalls of it it is quite heavy in hand especially when you're comparing it to the Insta360 so uh, to conclude I think what they've done is really good as always, they've made a step forward. Um, I'm disappointed by the weight and the feel, but apart from that and the price, that is the only downside, I think. This is a, a great move forward for GoPro. I think it's a, a great camera. If you're looking to you know, do running or adventure vlogging with it, I think this will do you just right. But I've got to be honest with you, straight up as always, I think the Insta360 is just a much better camera the stuff you can do with it is better. You get a lot of the stuff you get on it. Okay, you don't get, you know, the 4K 120. I don't know whether you do, but I don't think I do when I do it. But in terms of what you could do with it, the invisible selfie stick, all that kind of stuff. Personally, if you could buy one camera and you're not unfortunate like me, get sent stuff and whatnot, then I'd still go and buy the Insta 360. 1x2 I think it's called still can't remember the name but there you go okay people that's it say bye type see you later out